Hello. Welcome to the Field of Streams, where I, your host, Janine McRae, bring you the tiny thoughts that stream from my brain and present them to you as though they're an invisible shield that activates as soon as it starts raining and keeps you dry as a desert. But no, it's not just an umbrella because it completely envelops you like in a bubble and it won't get pulled inside out by a gust of wind. No, no, no. And it's not bad luck to activate it indoors. Mmm, superior. Now, I can't promise you much with these damp thoughts, but I can promise you this. I won't keep you long. Let's get into this. Today's episode was inspired by a very silly thing I found on the internet. I mean, where else, right? Uh, and it was about a group of people who call themselves sinkies. Now, whatever you're thinking right now, it's not that. Unless you were thinking, oh, they must be people who eat over sinks, sinkies. In which case, you nailed it. The page title of this website that I found reads, The International Association of People Who Dine Over the Kitchen Sink. It is a one-page website. It looks like it was made in 1993. And it also looks like it has not been updated since 1993. I will not hold that against the sinkies. Did you know, fun fact, that dine over your sink day is the day after Thanksgiving? Makes sense. But I guess that means sinkies are limited to Americans for that holiday? I would change that perhaps to the day after any national holiday that involves a lot of food. Australia Day in Australia, for example. Christmas in uh, a lot of countries. I don't know much about geography, obviously. It's just, you know, casual dining, I guess, over the sink with, as it says on the site, a view of the water. Hmm, that's uh, very funny. So that was the spark for uh, what is about to transpire. And what did that inspire in this complicated uh, brain of mine? Well, I thought that it tracked back quite well to the idea of examining the leftovers of your creative work to see either what was worth still eating and uh, what had expired and should be put into the compost bin. What you're about to hear dives into this idea of dining over the sink of your work, getting real messy because you can, you're over a sink, and picking out the best bits to make other work or throwing stuff away. Sort of like a how-to, or a why-should-you, something like that. Without any further place settings, I invite you to sit back, relax, and allow me to read to you a piece of my writing called How to Gorge on Your Creative Leftovers. Dine over the sink of your work. Have at it. Do not delay. Move that spout to the side and get to work. No one is watching. You are not being judged. This is your sink. These are your idea scraps. This is your mess. That's why sink eating is great, indulgent, delectable. Dining over the sink of your work is the best. Lost? This is your first sink feast. So I get it. Your first question is probably, what? And your second, once you've understood the what, is why. For ease of explanation, let's stay in the kitchen. Think of your brain as a fridge. Your brain fridge has many shelves. A crisper, a butter drawer, a place for condiments and weirdly shaped bottles in the door. That's just the architecture. Poised, like cheeky gargoyles upon that architecture, are many ideas. Some are raw and fresh. You just got them from the market and haven't even rinsed them yet. They are waiting to be turned into something by you. No pressure. Others have already been socialised and thrown into bowls and baked in ovens and turned into tasty meals. These are the ghosts of ideas past. The odours of thoughts gone by. A.K.A. the leftovers. These are prime sink foods. Good or bad, you still have them in your brain fridge. 
An incredible feast that everyone raved about and you know will taste even better the next day? It's in there. A half-baked idea you thought could have been more if only you'd spent a little more time on it. Right there behind the maraschino cherries. That magical, aesthetically pleasing thing that didn't turn out exactly right, but you couldn't bear to hoik it in the bin. There, in that Tupperware, ready to be consumed. The sink is calling, and you must go. Go stand in front of that fridge, open the door, stare into the leftovers abyss, and pick one. Take it to the sink, and dig in. If there's any juice left in those bones, any flavour, any potential for a new recipe, you're going to find it when you dine over the sink of your work. We haven't talked about the why. Let's talk about the why. 1. No menu. There is no set menu for sink dining. No elaborate courses, no platings, no seating times. Whatever leftovers are in season is what you're eating. Only sustainable sink foods here. Having no menu leaves you free to graze in the fridge of your output, door wide open, warmed by the light of your own spark, as you pick and choose your sink dining companion. No reservations. Got it? 2. Instant Yelp When you dine over the sink of your work, gorging on your delicious or suspicious leftovers, you get instant feedback. Oh, that flavour profile was good. I wonder what other directions I could take that... Hmm, these ingredients weren't dancing well together. Perhaps if I added some spice. By analysing past meals, you get straight to the yelp of it. Either a yelp of joy that you've found a good recipe that can be added to or enhanced, or the yelp one and done star, do not make again, review. 3. No Miss Manners You will never be called out for elbows on the table here because there is no table. Napkins? Don't need them. Take your hat off? No way. The etiquette of sink dining is easy. There is no etiquette. It doesn't matter what you're wearing. It doesn't matter if you burp loudly and vigorously at the sink because no one will call you on it. The only thing you should do is wash your hands before the gluttony. Not because of etiquette rules, but because of my next why. 4. The best tools are hand tools. Literally. No etiquette means no cutlery, no table settings, and no specific forks for specific courses. Just hands, digits and dexterity. Nothing between you and your ideas. Nothing. Dig your hands into that container and get your fingers into the good parts. Rip apart those delicious morsels with gusto and bravado and feel it all. Snap the bones and suck out the marrow. Gooey is good. Get in it up to your elbows. Your hands are your radar for finding friends or foes. Good? Just the right amount of oil? Bad? Spoiled? Left in this container too long and should be thrown away? Your hands are your best critics to hold up your own product to the light of your reflection and analyse effectiveness. To be absorbed back into you or discarded forever. Judge your work's taste. Be honest. Your hands are connected and visceral beings, which is why they should be clean to start. 5. Eat like a toddler. When you dine over the sink of your work, you can get good and messy. It's just you and the sink in this relationship. You and the sink and the greasy fingers and the chin juice and the shirt debris that's flung your way as you rip apart a roasted idea with your radar hands in your search for a potential thematic purpose. When you dine over the sink of your work, you can dribble and gurgle and burp and fling. You can make a mess like a two-year-old pro. You can stick your whole hand in your mouth to suck the juices of your endeavours and, dear reader, as you glance up from the sink and catch a reflection in the kitchen window. You will not be alarmed. No one is here. It's just you. 
You are not being judged for this chaos as you examine your work. Ugly eat, please, go hog wild in the slop of it. This is called process. Dining over the sink of your work is now just part of yours. 6. Crumbs and maulings. Sinks catch all the crumbs, you get all the flavour. As you gorge yourself like a starved animal upon your own work, it's only natural that in this frenzy some crumbs will fall from your gob and collect in the sink beneath you. Before you turn on the tap and wash them away, take one last loving look. You unpacked your brain, devoured the contents, and reabsorbed the good stuff. These are the crumbs of your labour. Acknowledge their sacrifice. Decide if you have a three-second rule at your sink, and then do what must be done. Turn on the tap and flick the switch of your garbage disposal unit. Wash away the mistakes, failures, or meh, and never think of them again. No more. Perhaps there was something in that. There wasn't. You did your due diligence during your sink feast and experienced all the flavour that was to be had. Extraction complete. These are the husks, the shells. Drop them down the sinkhole and listen as they rip and RIP to their final garbage disposal death. Dining over the sink of your work is like self-therapy. It helps to sort through thought and identify what's important to give you focus. And garbage disposals are fun. 7. Who doesn't want to be a cow? Cows have four stomachs. We have one. Guess what? Now you have one plus this sink. When you dine over the sink of your work, you are more cow-like in processing ideas and analysing your creative nutrition. You ruminate. You chew thoughtfully as you gaze out the window at the squirrels frolicking in your field of dreams. You digest and process with the purposeful nothingness of time. A second sink is a second think. Glorious. Who doesn't love time to think? Be more like a cow. And a toddler. Be a toddler cow. Which is a calf, I guess. My God, you're so cute at that sink right now. To summarise... Your sink is calling. I can hear it from here. Get to your brain fridge and pick out your leftovers. No point keeping the coulda beans and the once wases in the fridge forever. They'll just go off and stink up the future. Join the Society of Over the Work Sink Eaters, not sinkies, that's an actual thing, and chow down on your good self. Learn and extract all you can from the experience of past projects, if you can. And dining over the sink of your work is the perfect place to do it. And there you have it, today's episode. I hope you'll come back for more. These missives are designed to inspire creative folk to get out there and make something of their own. If you enjoyed what you heard today, follow the podcast so that you never miss an episode and sign up to read my writing at janinemccrae.substack.com. But for now, I'll leave you with this. Love what you love, and I'll see you out there making stuff.